Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And we are going to try to uh, broadcast live and hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, oh well. It is again good to see each of you here this morning and we are thankful that we have this opportunity to come together to worship the Lord and to edify one another, to strengthen one another. And what a blessing it is that we are able as Christians to do so. And of course we always encourage others to come as well and to be here with us to worship uh, the Lord, and of course, ultimately, we, we strive to help others to obey the gospel, to be saved. I would ask you to bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we assemble here this morning, and we worship you in accordance with your will. We strive to do so, and we are thankful that we have this opportunity to do so. Father, we are mindful that there are those who are unable to be here for various reasons. We know the weather is not the best, and we pray for them, and we hope that they will be able to return at the next point in time. Father, we are thankful for your word that guides us in the way that we should go. We pray that we will be uh, diligent in our studies of your word, that we'll be faithful to what your word teaches, that we'll apply these things to our la lives and live as you would have us to live. We pray that we may share the good news with others, that they may come to know you before it's everlasting too late. Father, it is in Christ's most precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. 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 Again, it's New Year, and Happy New Year, Feliz Año Nuevo. We are glad that we have this opportunity, and I always get excited about the new year because it is that opportunity a, a good time to kind of start anew start afresh we think about how the, the previous year has gone and sometimes it goes well sometimes it doesn't and when the new year comes around we we hope we think that we have that opportunity to then be begin anew this morning our sermon is entitled is titled, This is the Year, Este es el Año. And it is an important thought for us to understand and when we think about the, the new year. And hopefully as we go through this, we'll see some areas that we can grow in, areas that we can improve. Each January, we make New Year's resolutions. Cada enero hacemos Prospacitos de Año Nuevo. Most of the time we break these resolutions by the time February arrives. La mayoría de las veces rompemos estas resoluciones para cuando llegue, llegue que febrero. Again, my, my Spanish isn't the best, but working on it. This can be the year that we change that, brothers and sisters. Este puede ser el año en que cambiamos eso, hermanos y hermanas. This can be the year. Este puede ser el año en que we become true Bible students. Convertanse en verdaderos estu the antes de la Biblia. This can be that year, brothers and sisters, that we become a true student of the Bible. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Segundo Timoteo capítulo 2 y versículo 15. Segundo Timoteo capítulo 2 y versículo Insect. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. We are told, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, 
Segundo Pedro, capítulo 3 y versículo 18. We are told, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. In these texts, we are taught that we are to grow, and we grow by studying God's Word. We grow by looking at what His Word teaches us. This requires more than simply reading random texts. Esto requiere más que simplemente leer texto aleatorio. We can't just read random texts along and think that we are going to grow in knowledge of God's will, that we're going to grow as Christians. We must study the context of the passage. Debemos estudiar el contexto del pasaje. It requires looking. Too many times we see people who will open up the Bible and they read a text and what do they do? They take it out of context. And they start trying to twist it and, and turn it into something that it doesn't teach. It is important to understand the context. And, and so we must study the context of the passage. Debemos estudiar el contexto del pasaje. We must study it, brothers and sisters. Knowing something about the time that the book of the Bible was written is helpful. Saber algo acerca de la hora en que se escribió el libro de la Biblia es útil. We must know something about the time frame. We understand this because it, it, different time frames have different things going on. What was occurring whenever these books were written? How was the language used at that time? These things are crucial if we are going to understand God's will, if we're going to understand His Word. Having some understanding of the Greek, Hebrew, and Bible geography is of benefit. Tener cierta compresión de la geografía, griega, hebrea, y bíblica es beneficioso. Official brothers and sisters to know a little bit about these things. Now, understand, we don't have to be Greek scholars to know the Bible, to know the Word of God. We have the Word of God in our uh, own native languages. We have it in English. We have it in Spanish. There are other languages we know. We can open up our Bibles and we can read in our native language. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, as we've talked about, sometimes those words don't translate perfectly. And what I mean by that is that sometimes we have a word such as love. In the English, we, we use that word in a wide range of areas. But in the Greek, they have four different words talking about in the old Koine Greek, they have four different words that they used for love, that have different connotations, different way, different meanings, and so they bring out more about that. And so it is beneficial to understand the Greek and to know, again, about the geography. Since I've been here, I have repeatedly had brethren tell me about some place. I have no idea where it is. And then they tell me, oh, it's ne over here next to so-and-so, and I don't know where that is either. So it doesn't do me much good to hear about that, does it? If I don't understand where these places are, if I don't have an understanding of these things. Meditating upon God's Word is crucial. Meditar en la Palabra de Dios es crucial. It is important, it is crucial that we meditate upon God's Word. In Psalm 1 and verse 2, Psalm capítulo 1 y versículo 2, Psalm 1 and verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. 
en su ley, ley medita de día y de noche. Brothers and sisters, we need to be meditating, thinking upon God's word. Again, I don't simply read a text and say, well, I've read it. We hear about people who read through the Bible perhaps every year. Some people read it once a year. And that's commendable. That's good for us to do that. But brothers and sisters, it doesn't benefit me a great deal if all I'm doing is reading through these texts and not giving it any thought. Not considering what it, what it has to mean to me. James talks about that in James chapter 1. Santiago capítulo 1. And we see there in James chapter 1. You know, notice, of course, probably pretty familiar with the text there that James talks about the one who what? Looks in the mirror. Looks in the mirror and he goes away. Without really noticing in verses 23 and 24, versículos 24 y 25, back up to verse uh, 22, versículo 22. But be ye doers of the word and hearers only. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. Brothers and sisters, if we look at God's word, if we just randomly read through it, and we don't give it any thought, and we don't make any application to ourselves, we're just randomly looking at it and we forget our own selves and we aren't learning anything. We aren't growing thereby. It is important that we make certain that we are meditating upon His Word. Brothers and sisters, this can be the year we build a real prayer life. Este puede ser el año en que construye una verdad. Daria, vida de oración. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse seventeen. Premier Tessa Thessalonians says that one always trips me up, brothers and sisters. Capítulo cinco y versículo diez y siete. We read here, pray without ceasing. Orad sin cesar. It is important that we pray without ceasing. And we've, we've talked about this text in a number, on, on multiple occasions, and we understand what this means. We understand that it, it, it means that we have this as a continuous part of our lives, a daily part of our lives, brothers and sisters. In Matthew chapter 5, or excuse me, chapter 6, Verses 5 through 15, Mateo capítulo 6 y versículos 5 al 15. I didn't put it on the, the PowerPoint. It is a rather lengthy text there. But here we read, and we're not going to read this entire text, but I do want to read a little bit from it. Notice beginning there in verse 5, versículo 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye 
Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. And then he teaches, brothers and sisters, in this model prayer we can call it. He teaches them and teaches us how to pray. And it isn't the exact wording. Some people get wrapped up in this. They mistakenly call it the Lord's Prayer and they get wrapped up into it and they think that somehow repeating these exact words is what Jesus was talking about. That's not what He's talking about there. He's giving them a model, giving us a model of what we ought to pray for. How we ought to pray. That we worship. We uh, praise God. We see how He does that. That we think of others and pray for their needs. That we ask for those, what? Daily needs that we have. We think about, <coughs> give us, verse 11, versiculo once, give us this day our daily bread. Give us those things we need. I need that new Mercedes Benz, don't I? I need that 20 bedroom mansion, don't I? Brothers and sisters, we sometimes think we need things, but what do we need? We need food. We need shelter. We need clothing. These are things that we need. These are the things we ought to be praying for. In Matthew chapter 7, Verses 7 through 11, Mateo capítulo 7 y versículo 7 y al 11. Jesus, again, is speaking here and He says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or oh, what man is there of you whom if he is son as, as bread, will, give, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Brothers and sisters, God knows what you and I need. He knows this. But He still wants us to ask Him, to trust in Him, to express those needs to Him. Not vain repetitions, not just randomly going along and, and throwing out words, but, but brothers and sisters, Praying to Him and asking Him, trusting in Him, knowing that He is there and will help us. A real prayer life requires more than a few hasty words uttered before a meal or at bedtime. Una verdadera vida de oración requiere más que unas pocas palabras apresuradas pronunciadas antes de una comida o a la hora de acostarse. But that's what we often do, isn't it? We say a hasty few words before we, we eat. We go to bed and perhaps we throw out a few words and, and before we go to bed. Certainly we are to pray. Certainly we ought to be striving to pray at those times. Brothers and sisters, we ought to give thought to what we're praying about. We ought to pray when we get up in the morning. We ought to pray throughout the day. And, and remember, we don't just ask Him, we praise Him, we praise God. We thank Him for the things that we, we have received. We thank Him for the many blessings He has given us. These ought to be on our mind, in our hearts. We ought to be doing these things. And this is what makes up a real uh, prayer life. 
Jesus prayed and prayed often. Jesus oraba y oraba a menu, menu, menudo. He prayed and he prayed often, brothers and sisters. You look and if you study, and, and we're not going to go through all the text, but if you if you look and you study Jesus' prayer life, he prayed often, didn't he? He'd go out at night by himself and pray. He'd get up in the morning and he'd go and he'd pray. He prayed for the food. He prayed. We think about there in the garden and he prayed to the Father whenever he was in that time of crisis. So we see each of these. We see his prayer life. He was praying to the Father. And if the Son of God if deity himself saw that need to pray, do we not understand that need to pray? Do we not understand and see that need to pray often? He prayed about many things. Oro acerca de muchas cosas. We, we have the announcements before worship, at the beginning of, of worship service. And we talk about those who are on the prayer list. We talk about those who are sick. Those who are uh, having other issues that arise. We talk about those who are moving. We talk about uh, many different areas where people have those needs. Brothers and sisters, that is not all inclusive. That is that we don't list off everything that could be mentioned. We don't mention every name that could be mentioned. I'm sure that we each know individuals who need prayers that aren't mentioned. We as individuals can pray for those people. We can be praying about those needs. Often on Facebook I see people put these, these uh, prayer requests. Not mentioning anything but, but pray for this person who has this secret need. I understand there are some times that there are delicate matters. Well, brothers and sisters, we ought not to be afraid to mention that this is a need. This is a, a, a situation that I need prayers about. Yes, sometimes I have to be diplomatic or, or delicate about the situation, and, and we shouldn't be just uh, throwing every detail out there. We think of the letters TMI in English, and I'm not sure how that would translate in Spanish, but too much information. Sometimes people give us too much information. I don't need all the details, the gory details, about everything. Someone is sick. I can pray for them to get well. Brothers and sisters, we see Christ prayed, and prayed often. Again, prayed were there in the garden, prayed over the food, prayed for those he were about to, that he was about to heal. These are all things we can be praying about, that people are praying for the needs of others. Brothers and sisters, this can be the year we bury the old man once and for all. Este puede ser el año en que enterrar al viejo de una vez por todos. And I'm pretty sure with that double R I'm supposed to roll my tongue, but I've never been able to do that, brothers and sisters. But we can bury the old man, the old person, once and for all. When we obey the gospel, we bury the old man and become a new person. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and following. Cuando obedecimos el evangelio inter enterramos al anciano y nos convertimos en una nueva persona. Romanos capítulo 6 y versículo 3 and going on from there. Too often though we let our old way of life hang around. Con, de, con demasiada Frecuencia, sin embargo, dejamos que nuestra antigua forma de vida se cuele. We, we often 
uh, do that, don't we? We obey the gospel, and what do we find ourselves? Doing the same thing. Living that same life. Hanging out with those same people that had us living in sin. Doing the same things with them that we did before. I'm still the same old person, right? Someone might get up and say, Oh, well, you know, Robert, you obeyed the gospel. I can't be around. I'm still the same person I was. Brothers and sisters, if I can make that statement, there's a problem. <laughs> I'm still the same person I used to be, living the same life I used to live, then there's a problem. In Romans chapter 1 and verses 20 through 32, Romano uh, capítulo 1 y versículos 20 al 32. Again, I did not put this text here on the PowerPoint. And we're not going to read through it. But you can notice several things that are listed in there. And, and I often point to this, this text and how we see many things. How they did not have proper respect for God as we began there in, in verse 20. We see many things that, that we might uh, look at and think, oh, well, there's, there's one of those big sins, right? Notice beginning in verse 26, versículo 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use <coughs> of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, man, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was me. Talking about homosexuality. Well, there, there's one of those big things. There's one of those things we can, we can see that. Brothers and sisters, notice it doesn't stop there. It doesn't say that's the only sin. You know, sometimes we, we'll, we'll talk about that particular sin, and we sometimes maybe we leave out other things. Notice though, verse 28, versículo 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. And it goes on. Do we see some things that maybe we have problems with as individuals? Do we see things that, well, we obeyed the gospel, but we still do those same things? This can be the year, brothers and sisters, that we stop doing those things. That we stop letting those things be a part of our lives. In Jude, Verse 21, Judas, 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 versículo 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. We are to keep ourselves in Christ, keep ourselves faithful to Him. 2 John, verse 8. Segundo Juan, versículo 8. Look to yourselves that we love, that we lose not, excuse me, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Look to yourself. That is what we are to do. Examine ourselves, we see in various other texts. Examine ourselves, what? That we are being Christians, that we are being faithful. These are things we ought to be doing. We can edify one another. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 11. Demos edificar nos unos a otros. 1 Thessalonians 5, versículo 5 y 8. Capítulo 5 y versículo 11. See, of course, there, 
how we are told indeed to edify one another. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11, Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So we are to edify one another. We can do that more this year, can't we? We can be that person that we ought to be, put away that old man, bury that old person, lift one another, one another up. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 12. Levantense unos a otros. Hebreos capítulo 12 y versículo 12. We see there, brothers and sisters, the Hebrews writer there in, in chapter 12 and verse 12. <laughs> Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. We ought to want to help one another, shouldn't we? Help those who are in need. Not because it gets me a pat on the back. Not because they then owe me a favor. I did something good for, for Jim here, so he owes me a favor, right? That's the attitude I have. I'm wasting my time, aren't I? If that's what I'm seeking, what did Jesus say? They have their reward, right? Those who pray to be heard, they have their reward. Those who do things for others because it gets them a pat on the back, they have their reward. This can be the year we change. Este puede ser el año en que cambiemos. This can be the year that we are really about our Father's business. Luke 2, verse 49. Este puede ser el año en que realmente nos ocupamos de los asuntos de nuestro Padre. Lucas capítulo 2, versículo 49. Change requires effort. It requires commitment. El cambio requiere esfuerzo, requiere compromiso. This can be the year. Este puede ser el año en que. We think about what we've looked at, brothers and sisters. How that we can become real Bible students. How we can become, uh, uh, have a real prayer life. How we can put away that old man. I want to note. I made sure to get this. I, I didn't include it, but I want to make a note. We, we certainly have that need here, brothers and sisters. We think about being a real, a, a real uh, Bible student. I want you to remember this. The better Bible student we become, the better Bible teacher we can be. Cuanto mejores estudiantes de la Biblia seamos, mejores ma maestros de la Biblia podemos ser. Brothers and sisters, we have that need here for more Bible teachers. We have very few. And I appreciate those who do, and I know that others have in times past, and, and perhaps have reached the point where it, it, it is, they, they can't any longer for uh, uh, various reasons. Brothers and sisters, each one of us should be examining ourselves and striving to become that Bible student and, and ultimately that Bible teacher. And remember, you don't have to be in a classroom to be a Bible teacher. You can teach someone else the Word of God. This can be the year. Este puede ser el año en que. Will it be? Sad. It's up to us, isn't it? Will this be the year that you obey the gospel if you're not a Christian? Will this be the year that you live more faithfully if you haven't been? Will this be the year that we as individuals and as a congregation, be what we ought to be. Strive even harder to be faithful to God. Will this be the year? Sarah. If 
you're here this morning, if you haven't obeyed the gospel, the Bible very plainly lays out what one must do. We must hear the word, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, repent of one's sin, confess Him to be the Son of God, and be baptized, immersed in water for the remission of one's sin. If you're here and haven't done so, we would encourage you to do so. Today is a great day to obey the gospel. Or maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you just haven't been what you need to be. Maybe you've stumbled. Maybe you look at what we've talked about this morning. You you know you can do better in one, all, or some of these areas or other areas. Again, we didn't talk about everything that we could have. Maybe you see some need for improvement. Maybe it's a private issue. Go to God. Seek His forgiveness. Seek His help. I was reading there and. I believe it's Proverbs 3 and, and verses 4 and 5. Proverbios uh, capítulo 3 y versículo 4 y 5. I think that's the right text. That it talks about trusting in the Lord. Not in our own selves. Trust in Him. Maybe you've been trusting in yourself. That you can do it all on your own. Put your trust in God. Depend on Him. If you're here this morning and you have need, we encourage you and plead with you to come while we stand and while we sing. <clears throat>